To my younger self, what's your story? To my younger self. 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 What's your story? To my Good morning, good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing? Oh my God, it feels like summer has just decided they're going to be here, whether we like it or not. Good morning, it is Tuesday morning. My name is Zoe Baraka. Wow, it is the 31st of May. My goodness, look how far we've all come. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Zoe Baraka and the show, of course, is To My Younger Self, where we tell stories. Today's show, however, is To My Younger Self present authors, corner and i cannot wait for you to meet our next african or can i say our next ghanaian slash african author you are going you're in for a ride and i'm in for a ride before we go into anything do forgive yours truly i seem to have like a little cold sore and let me tell you putting on makeup today <laughs> now that would have been the real show <laughs> But we're here and we are going to just keep going forward. One foot in front of the other, one step at a time. We're going to keep going forward. If you're here, I do want to hear from you. Please go into the comment section. I see a few people are here already. Can you say good morning to me in your local dialect? Say hello to me. Tell me where you're watching us from. Tell me your name. Anything at all you would like for us to know. We are communal people in Africa. We like to hear ourselves. We like to talk to each other. So please, please, please talk to me. Good morning, Antoinette. How are you? Good morning from the Windy City. Is it as hot as it is here? Because <laughs> we're like, we're inching 90s today and I don't even understand why. I don't understand why at all. <laughs> Anyway, um, and happy birthday to you. I know that um, Antoinette celebrated her birthday this past week. So happy birthday to you. Thank you so much for always being a part of our little village, little community. We are so grateful for your life. We thank God for your life. Let me greet us all in our different local dialects. Oh my God, I see there's a few people here already. Um, Producer Extraordinaire, Big Sis Elsie, thank you for joining us. Della, thank you so much for joining us. It is so, so good to see you guys. Good morning from North Carolina. So, so good to see you. Listen, where are you watching us from? <laughs> You are most welcome, sis. You are most welcome. Greetings to you. Baraka da zua to you. Sanunku da zua. Yayade ya kakwana kakwana lafia. I hope you slept well today. I certainly did. It was hot, but I slept well. I just greeted you in Hausa, the Hausa dialect. Um, if you're in especially northern parts of Nigeria, northern parts of Ghana, and really almost every northern part of Africa, if you speak Hausa, I greet you, I greet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Ken Ken, Toma Toma, Fudua Wela, Toma Awela. We are so grateful you're here to pose it with I am greeting you in the Kusal dialect, which is my mother tongue. Thank you for joining us. In Dinao to you, if you speak Ebe. So good to see you, the Volta region of Ghana. So good to see you. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I greet you, I greet you. And to say, over to Den, Yamawakwaba, we greet you. We welcome you. I just spoke to you in the Akan dialect. Thank you for joining us. I will bone on it to you if you speak Zulu. I greet you, I greet you. Ibella to you, Ibiokibari to you. Um, I just greeted you in the Moshi dialect. Oh, Jay, call to you if you speak 
gum. You know, the closed captioning is always saying, O.J. Cole. <laughs> I don't know. I must, I must be saying it wrong somehow. Please do correct me if you're here and you speak gum. I want to hear from you. A caro to you, a cabo to you. If you speak, I wanted to say if you speak Nigerian, terrible. You cannot speak Nigerian. You can speak Yoruba. You can speak the Ibibio dialect. You can speak um, um, Igbo, but you cannot speak Nigerian, okay? <laughs> Nagadev to you. If you speak Wolof, I greet you. I greet you. Jambo, Jambo, Habari Gani. Oh my God. Thank you so much for joining us. If you speak Swahili or Kishwahili, Karibu Sana to you. Kotong, Amehalang to you. If you speak Soseto, I am greeting you. I am greeting you. Kotoli to you. Everyone who speaks for Foldi, if you are Fulani, I am greeting you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Nyase Aloy Domilaki, I am greeting you in the Bisa language. Akei to you. If you speak Creole, not Haiti. What is going on in my brain today? Something is always going on. <laughs> bon dia to you if you speak Portuguese. Listen, if you're in Australia, I hear that we have an incredible fan in Australia. And I'm going to try to say good day, mate, to you. Good day. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Now. Buenos dias. Of course, to San Yusio Kabulaka to you. I think I just butchered that, but you know what I mean. We are so happy to see you. Welcome, 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 welcome. Listen, I am very excited today. Oh, I see Audrey is here. Oh, yes, my family. Audrey, I am hugging you. I am hugging you. Thank you for joining us, making time to join us um, at a time like this. Um, our dear professor. Uh, and I don't know if you're sharing this yet, so I would just say I love you. And if we are sharing this, then maybe next week I can share it. But I love you. I am. My heart goes out to you. I am here praying for you. And you know how we do. We tell stories and we make each other uh, remember who we are and those that have gone on. Right. So I love you. I'll say that just for now. And we'll touch base after um, this uh podcast or broadcast or wirecast or broadcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Beverly Ross, I see you. Good morning to you. Listen, I'm about to introduce to you a powerhouse, a giant. Okay. For those of you who are here, I see the numbers are going up, but you're not saying good morning to me in your local dialect. What's going on? Say good morning to me. Okay. I need to hear from you. It's been a particularly difficult week for me personally. But I'm bouncing back, and I think hearing from you will help me. How about that? Can you help me a little bit? <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to a particularly incredible woman. This woman takes no prisoners, okay? In the last week or two that I have gone to, I've gotten to know her and gotten to read her work and kind of research a little bit about her, she has taken life by the horns and she is writing life and saying you cannot i'm not going to fall off this horse i'm not going to fall off this uh, 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 uh cart i don't know what you're going to do to me but i will just keep moving forward and there is no door that is too small or too big for me to knock on and ask it to open now that's powerful and i am so grateful to god that she came into my life at this point present moment. Uh, God always does that. Sometimes you just need people to kind of lift you up. And Rosemond's book, <laughs> let me not gush over the book yet. Let us gush a little bit over Rosemond first. Rosemond Sapin Owens is a seasoned diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice practitioner. Hey, and that diet, me bro for the year what I just said was, as for today, my English is going to be out of this world. It's heavy English. <laughs> Rizman was born and bred in Ghana. Um, she holds a degree in modern languages and a master's in public health. Rizman credits her success to God's divine providence and to a good education and spent her time in giving back to the community via the organization Sanitation and Literacy Ghana Salk. 
with a vision to advance literacy efforts and improve sanitation in Ghana. Now, I've never really kind of connected those two because you always almost always think they're like two entities. But yes, even though it's not in the Bible, we do say that cleanliness is next to godliness. And if you are godly, it means you are intellectual and you're smart, right? Education always goes with sanitation. I just never connected the two. Rizman calls herself a chief encouragement officer, CEO, and believes the Lord put her on this earth to be an encouragement to others. Um, she was the first black female president for the organization Books for Africa. And if you haven't heard about Books for Africa, I challenge you, go on to the Google now and kind of just type in Books for Africa and you will know what just how big this is. Um, Roseman has authored several books, including what we're about to discuss today, Apples in a Seed and Five Children's Books. She established the Lions Historian Press. I'm excited about this project to publish books to address the lack of books depicting, depicting black characters and to highlight heroes of African descent. Rosemond lives in the Midwestern United States with her husband and three beautiful, beautiful, incredibly intelligent daughters, ladies and gentlemen, storytelling connoisseurs. There's something going on today. I, I guarantee you something is going on today. Please, please help me like we always do in To My Younger Self, grand fashion storytelling platform. Please help me welcome Rosemond Sapper Owens. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello and good morning. It is um, so good to see you. Look at that kente. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's good to be seen. Uh huh. Yes, it is yeah. good to be seen. Wow, you are very welcome to the show. And in our grand fashion, I was about to say over to you. I forgot that we're here to talk about a book. So it cannot be <laughs> over to you. <laughs> oh, my God. So Rosemond wrote a book titled Apples in the Seed. And I don't know if you can see it. Apples in a seed. Now you always think about that phrase and say seeds in an apple or seeds in a mango or seeds in whatever, like popo or whatever uh, fruit that tickles your fancy. But I'd never heard anyone put it quite like this, apples in a seed or oranges in a seed. It's, it's mind boggling. And I think that's why I'm very excited to talk to Rosemond today. Um, and we're just going to kick it off. But before we do that, how about I ask her a, a very general question? We're going to zero in what this book really is about. Rosemond very painstakingly took time to write about nine incredible characters that I believe have impacted her own life, her own life journey. Now, what I didn't expect this book to do for me was to give me a mini biography into these lives, some of which I knew already, but just didn't know enough, and some of which I didn't know at all. I'd never heard about them, and I was disappointed, I was sad, but I was also very excited to begin with because it made me go on to research more and want to do more for the African continent. This book is incredible. And I kept saying, after I finished it, I kept going, but I want more. Nine is not enough. Where are the others? Where are the other people? Come on. So we're here to talk about Apples in the Seed. If you have not had it yet, if you don't know where to get it, please, 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 please find it on Amazon, find it on Book Nuke. And before we jump in, let us take a message from our sponsor for, for today, which is Book Nuke. Book Nuke is the Amazon of Ghana, the Amazon giant of Africa. We're taking over. That is where you go to order this book. Okay. And we want to thank our big brother, Nana, for being so supportive all the time. Nana Redamo, thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty, here we go. You are most welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Here we go. Roseman, please, please tell me. The question in this book, in the beginning, you said that your quest to write this book started with the question that you were asking yourself, what if? 
it is such a minefield for me because once you start asking yourself, what if, you can go so many different directions. How did that question bring you here to this point of the book? How did that happen? Um, so hello again um, to you, um, Zoe. I am happy to be here. And thank you for all those who from different parts of the world who are joining us here today. Yes. What if is a question that I ask all the time. But before that, I just want to give your audience a taste of a little bit of why I wrote Apples in a Seed. Mm -hmm. So Apples in a Seed, Unleashing Your Unique You, was written with the purpose of calling our attention to the potential found in all of us, but found in the most unlikely people and in the most unlikely places. So people whom the world might have written off and who ended up but who ended up having the attention of the world. Mm -hmm. The hope in writing apples in a seed is that we will find in these people some of the traits, some of our own lives, mm -hmm. and hopefully draw some, some lessons in our own lives as well. Right. So what if, right? Mm -hmm. So what if, I always say that, what if I hadn't gone to Cambridge International S School where I learned to have a good grasp grasp of the English language mm. what if I didn't go to Wesley Girls what if I didn't pass the common entrance what if I didn't go to Legon and studied French and Spanish wow. what if I didn't get an opportunity to go to Spain what if I didn't get an opportunity to go to France what if I didn't get the opportunity so you see that the audit the what ifs never end right yes. Yes. but in it too you can see what if you know how we like to complain about how things don't go our way, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about books for Africa. The first time I actually attempted to, con to connect books for Africa, what if it wasn't God's time yet? They didn't even get back to me. <laughs> wow. When it was the right time, the what if was I joined and in two years I was the president. Timing wow. is important. Right? So even right now in our lives, things probably are not working. Like, I wanted to travel out of the country, I think, in the first week of May. I wanted to spend my birthday with my mom, you know. The what if for me was that God, so then I, I, I got COVID. So my trip was cut maybe two weeks. Mm -hmm. But I'm still here. I am well. So the point is that every point in our life, we, re we have to realize that God is always there. He's in the mundane, right? Those right. things that we don't even think of. So you think of the what if, right? So mm -hmm. what if I, you know, I've had a, so many things. And when I look at, when I look back, I say, ah, Lord, if it hadn't been for all these things, mm -hmm. right? So what if is big and it's not something you can close. Like mm -hmm. when you open it, it's like, right. what if, what if, what if? <laughs> it's so true. In fact, it took me all the way down. And then one of the things I kept hearing in my spirit was, what if you weren't born? And I realized what a sad world that might have been if I wasn't born. Exactly. <laughs> we, you know, you in it, me in it, everyone that is on here. Kofi is here. Kofi Champo, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Big Brother Nana Redamwa, Della, Elsie. Uh, what if we weren't born? It just gave me a totally different perspective that it was so important that I was here. The what if is that I was here. And my life could have gone into so many different trajectories, but I am here. Hey, audience, here's the question for you. Have you ever thought about that? What if, what if your life had gone in different directions? Let us know what you, you, you're thinking. If your life had gone into a different direction, what would you have been? I don't know. Mm. I studied a Greek in, in SSS. I could have been a pathologist. I can't even believe that, that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Roseman, here's another question for you. In this book, you write about nine figures, right? And um, let me go into the contents and, and, and we can talk a little bit about them. You wrote about Fanny uh, Crosby, you wrote about Kwame Nkrumah, um, Esther Oku, uh, Maya Angelou, uh, uh, Mother Teresa, and a couple others, you know, Abraham Lincoln and so on, but there were nine figures, Nelson Mandela, why nine? I'm so intrigued by it. Why did you stop at nine? Why not 10 to make it a whole number? 
why not five? You know, why nine? How did you decide it will be nine? I just want it to be nine people from this book. Why that? So I always tell people that there's always a method to my madness. But there was actually not a method. And I think Nana Rek and Atest, he being the publisher of this book, that I had so many people I wanted to write about. I wanted to write about. And so I did all the research, right? Mm -hmm. So all these people are there. Mm -hmm. But I think in the quest to make this book easy to read, mm -hmm. we wanted to make it easy so that if you paid it, it was something you could do. And then some of those people that we decided to leave out, it wasn't the time yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking that this was the best, the best mix of people. Mm -hmm. And being an inclusionist, so, you know, I work around inclusion, social justice all the time, mm -hmm. and I needed to practice inclusion also. So we, I was thinking of making it all Ghanaian, all African, and this was the version that came when mm -hmm. it came. There was not a method to it, but it was all done in the spirit of inclusion, and it's also ease of read for the reader. Wow, and I'm so glad that you brought up the, 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 the word inclusion because honestly for me, one of the first things that hit me when I, I, I picked up the book to read was I said, all right, I know Rosamond is African and she's from Ghana, but the first character on here is someone that I had heard about but not necessarily read about. So I said, Fanny Crosby. Um, who is that? And why is she writing? Why is a Ghanaian woman writing about Fanny Crosby? Um, I don't necessarily care to know about her. Of course, so I had that air about me. And I, I remember saying to myself, well, I have to read it for a show. So let's see what this funny Crosby is all about. But by the time I was done, I was like, whoa, I'm so glad I got to read about her because nothing would have pushed me to ever want to go on to Google or, I don't know, Britannica or whatever, to try to find anything about Fanny Crosby. And I was so struck by her story. And I'm going to read a little bit for the audience to understand just a little bit. What um, um, you wrote here was this. Fanny Crosby had no sight, but had great vision. She was a pioneer who advocated for the poor contributed immensely to the cause of blind education and championed her faith. She is long gone from this earth, but she left behind an enduring legacy for generations to come. Now she was born between, she was born March 24th, 1820, and she, she, was, she passed on February 12th, 1915. We were not even a blip on this earth at that time. Our parents and their parents' parents were not even a blip. But somehow, somehow, we're reading about her today, and we got to know, as, as I read on, I realized she met presidents, she wrote so many hymns, the hymns that we're, we're, we're singing now. This woman was kind of, I can talk on and on and on about just this one character. But um, here's the question that, you know, what Rosemond has done is she has like, you know, um, reflection time questions in the book. So this is a really good book to even include in your morning devotion. For those of you who, you know, I've come to realize that morning devotion does not necessarily have to just be Bible, Bible. The Bible is so much bigger. It's learning people and learning the creation of God is so huge. So you can do that. But here's a question for you, uh, Rosemond. Uh, you said that, can you identify Eunice in your life? Are you a Eunice to someone or is there someone you can be a Eunice to? And I'd like you for you to start with uh, the biblical reference of who Eunice is, because both you and I know who Eunice is in the Bible, but perhaps maybe there's someone who doesn't know who Eunice is. So um, so Eunice or Lois, right? Mm -hmm. So you know Paul, the apostle, had um, had many, had many, young men that he he um encouraged or that he led to get to know the mm -hmm. lord yes one of these young men was timothy right and timothy had a grandma called eunice mm -hmm. 
Fanny Crosby also had a grandmama called Eunice. Mm. So Fanny Crosby's mother, in the you talked about the time she was born. Right. For a blind person, there was no hope. There was no it's not like today. Mm. The grandmother was able to help the mother rear and bring up Fanny Crosby. Mm. It was actually the grandmother who realized all the gifts that Fanny Crosby had. Fanny Crosby's mother was always working and didn't have time. If it wasn't for her grandma Eunice, who mm. taught her how to be strong in the midst of not seeing, but mm. how to be independent. It's thanks to the grandmother of Fanny Crosby that today the world got to, mm -hmm. got to benefit mm -hmm. from the lives of Fanny Crosby. Wow. I haven't met a president in my life. <laughs> Fanny Crosby, the blind woman, met almost all the presidents in the United States till she died. She lobbied on behalf of, the, of, of people who were blind and people who were disabled. Wow. And of all the characters in Apples in a Seed, one of my classmates, who I would not name in Ghana, called me one day and she read Fanny Crosby. She has a son who is autistic. Mm. So she cried so much. Wow. But after that, she had hope. She, Fanny Crosby didn't have to be a Ghanaian. So I thought about including mm -hmm. somebody who was, who was not physically able to mm. demonstrate that God doesn't work with only the able. God works with anything and with everything, right? And that I picked Fanny Crosby also because I'm a Christian and I love her music and her mm. hymns that she bequeathed to all of us, you know. So wow. Fanny Crosby was very purposeful because I was thinking between Fanny Crosby and Helen Keller and I wrote everything about them. I picked Fanny Crosby because Helen Keller came from a rich family. Right. Fanny Crosby didn't. Mm. So mm. The, the importance of apples in a seed is that it doesn't matter where we come from. Mm. So Helen Keller didn't really fit that. Mm. But she's also somebody that I really, 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 really admire. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for that answer. That's incredible. We're going to keep moving on. Um, and I think that we're going to touch on a few of the, of the, of the characters or profiled uh, uh, great men and women that you wrote about. Another person I didn't really know much about i've heard about jesse owens but I, I i mean you know okay he broke some records and because i'm not into sports so much i didn't really go out of my way to kind of find out anything about jesse owens now one of the most incredible things you wrote when you you, you know you penned down jesse owens that kind of hit me and <laughs> and I'm using this word loosely because, you know, but kind of resurrected me is this. And, and, and Rosemond talks about this concerning Jesse Owens. But before we do that, for those of you who don't know who Jesse Owens is, let me read a little bit about, about him um, to you. Recent Olympic games has been filled with many people of color, record breakers and gold medalists, but this wasn't always the case. People like Carl Lewis, Usain Bolt, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, they all have Jesse Owens to thank for paving the way. Jesse didn't just break records. He also broke racial barriers. Now that part, that part was like, oh my God, this, anyway, let me not even go there because I won't stop. <laughs> the thought of it seemed impossible. How was it possible for a black man in the early 1900s <laughs> from the United States of America to win four gold medals at the Olympic Games amidst all the racism and segregation in that area. And mind you, as you read the book, you will find out that, first of all, Mr. Adolf Hitler did not care to shake his hand, even though he won four gold medals. And when he came back to America, his own president still didn't care to honor him because he was not the right color at the time to, to deserve any kind of mention at all. He had done all these incredible things and the people that mattered at the time didn't even care to recognize him because of the way he looked. And um, this is the most, the, the power pa uh, punching thing I was talking about. It says here, your shackles might be different from Jesse's and mine, but we each face demons on a daily basis. The difference lies in our ability to fight or to roll over and give up. 
Jesse Owens didn't give in. And I hope we do the same too. For someday the sun will shine over your seed and it will germinate and bear fruit too. I, oh my God, I just shut up. And I think that's when I broke into a praise dance because I, I said, you know what? I'm facing some demons of my own, but you know what? I'm up, I'm up now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what made you choose Jesse Owens? And I'm going to read ask you a question here many reasons inspired jesse owens to run what inspires you to do the things dear to your heart now audience i want you to also just answer these questions for us in the comment section what inspires you to run um not literally but what you know when you wake up in the morning what gives you that kick in the step i really really want to hear from you um rosemond what inspires you to run that is a big question, and it's a big one, um, Zoe, and I need to think about it. Um, I think, as I think more about it, it's more about impact and purpose. So mm -hmm. like Jesse Owens, I also used to sprint. I used to, I used to run a lot when, when wow. I was at Wesley Girls. I was a good runner. But then I was also very sick all the time. So Jesse Owens had chronic bronchial conge congestion. I had chronic um, childhood asthma. Mm -hmm. So I was sick all the time in the hospital all the time. Wow. But what broke it for me was after 18, I wasn't sick anymore, right, till today. But what gives me every morning, what actually gives me, inspires me to run is the fact that I, unlike a lot of others who I grew up with, didn't get the opportunity that I had. Mm. I don't want to make sure that I waste those opportunities. Mm. Mm. And it's very important. I could live a very comfortable life in the United States, but I cannot. Because wow. God, I know, made me on purpose for a purpose. Mm. So I want to make sure that I live that purpose. Wow. And I don't let anybody fool me. It's not about me. It's not about the designer clothes and all those. By the way, I don't have any of that. My kids <laughs> always say I'm, I'm too cheap. That is fine. <laughs> but... Oh my God. So that the purpose for which we were made, so that that purpose can be realized. So like some of your audience are also alluding to, every morning that I wake up, I'm happy. Mm. So the night ends, that day is gone. This another day. I mm. wake up singing with a song on my heart. I get up and my family hates me on Saturdays. <laughs> I put on the radio so loud and I am so happy to be alive and well. Mm. and to get another opportunity to do this thing called life one more day. One so for more. me, that's it for me. Because remember, I was sick all the time. Mm. I shouldn't have made it to this, but then by God's grace, we made it. So if we made it, then there must be a purpose for which we were allowed to still be here. Mm. So we don't have to waste it. And that's what gives wow. me the, 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 the fuel to run. And so again, if you haven't picked up this book, you know, every time we do Author's Corner, I sound like a, a, um, um, a person that is selling something on TV, like a salesperson, right? If you haven't picked up this book yet, please go and get the book. But honestly, um, I believe in these authors and I believe in the work that they're doing. And, and, and we, well, I personally read every single book we, 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 um, we talk about on this platform. And so when I tell you, please go and get it, it's it's not uh, you know it's not like we get a code that hey when you buy it put a code in and I get some money or something like that no it really really is believe you would find so many nuggets in here your your head will spin and with that let us go and hear another message from our sponsor who is Book Nook and whilst we're doing that I want you to jump on your not on your phone or your tablet the one you're watching us on not that another something and then go on to book nuke if you're in africa and find apples in the sea get that whilst we're getting a message from um from our sponsors okay all righty uh bear with me one moment and i see that we lost rosemond for a little bit and this is a great time to take a message we will be right back <laughs> very serious question our kids have often asked how come I look so different from the people in the books I read? Their homes, their food, 
their celebrations feel so different. Parents, you should not discount this as mere kids' questions. They often struggle with their identities, and this is crucial for their development. Let's begin with exposure. Reading brings exposure and enlightenment, but not just reading. Reading materials that resonate with your identity. Reading books by our Ghanaian authors on our heritage, our culture, our occasions, our folklore, our history, our way of life. Reading about everything that there ever was. But more importantly, reading material that are written by us. Welcome back and thank you again to Nana Are Damoa and his um, mighty, mighty group of people out there in Ghana doing incredible work for Ghanaian authors, African authors, and really authors all over the world. They're doing incredible work. Nana Are Damoa, thank you so much for being who you are and for doing what you do for our heritage, legacy, and posterity, okay? All righty. Um, so, we're talking to Rosamund Sapong Owens, an incredible author, author of the book Apples in a Seed, and we're we're going through and we're discussing all these incredible things. Now, when once you get the book, we're gonna jump through a little bit because I we don't want to give all of the good stuff over to you, right? Um, so she wrote a, uh, something about Maya Angelou. I want you to go and get the book so you can read that. There's some things I didn't know about Maya Angelou, and I've studied her a little bit. So you know, there is that. Um, she wrote a little bit also about um, Mother Teresa. Some things I didn't know about Mother Teresa you will find here. Let me tell you, this woman does some good research, okay? <laughs> um, of course, Nelson Mandela, who we all know and love and call Madiba, um, he also um, was written about here. Here is one of the things about Nelson Mandela. Some of the things you wrote about him were all very, very powerful. But one of the things that stuck to me was this. This is the author's take around where you wrote on uh, Nelson Mandela. It says, if you talk to a man in the language he understands, this will be on page 87. Um, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, it goes to his heart. You know, I never really kind of thought about that. And to find out that you speak multiple languages, I'm tempted to ask you to speak to us in Spanish, say anything in Spanish. I don't know what. Maybe uh, greet us, read a little bit of this in Spanish, something. I want to hear you, even though I don't speak Spanish. But for our Spanish-speaking audience who I know are going to watch later, it's going to go to their hearts. And I did not realize Nelson Mandela actually said this. So that's incredible, right? So what fueled your love for language and how have, has that fueled your quest for inclusion and, and social justice? Um, I think that's how God made me. And also languages was very easy for me. I didn't really like math, right? So it's always been those things that come easy to you in developing your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I also, I'm a people person mm -hmm. and I love people from all the parts of the world. So those who know me, even when I was at the university in Ghana, there was a population studies um, um, master's program at the University of Ghana. They were my friends. So I sort of, I've had this always drive, but I didn't know then that God in his wisdom had put all the pieces together, right? So of course, Spanish was easy for me. So I got to live in Spain, which was nice. I love the Spanish language. I didn't know that God knew that I would live in a place where my first job in the US was a bilingual birth um, person. Wow. So it was a Spanish. And the Spanish people always thought that I came from the Dominican Republic. And at times I said, yes. So they called me Rosa. And I was at TJ Maxx one day and somebody 
who had come to her hospital had to be, Rosa, Rosa. She called me because she didn't know what it meant, whether it's something was a seal or not, you know. Yeah. So I think that God in his purpose, he knows the end from the beginning. I didn't know I was going to live in Spain. I thought I was going to marry a rich Ghanaian and stay in Ghana, right? So <laughs> these things you never know. But then God knew, right? So I think wow. that that language. And so in the hospital where I worked, there was a Russian um, woman who was in the hospital who was very sad. And my neighbor in, in, in Kumasi, parents, mom was Russian. And because I loved the, I liked to go to the house to eat all the time, mama less taught me Russian. So I spoke Russian, right? So then I was at this hospital and I went and I said, don't you think, Kadila, like this woman, her eyes nearly came out. I just breathed her in Spanish. But the fact that somebody was speaking to her, so even when she was sick, she was able to, right? So, so I think that languages are powerful. And in Ghana, we are blessed. Mm. Else, when you started, you spoke Hausa, you spoke Fanti. You, that is how Ghana, we are blessed that other countries are not. Mm. You mm. see a Ghanaian, they speak all these languages. So if, if I'm a Hausa person and I speak and I chant it to somebody, I'm speaking to their heart, yes. right? Wow. So anytime I go to a store and I want people to give me like a discount or something, I speak their language. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. I go to the food truck, I said, hola, and I start, they said, okay. So then, wow. then we hit it off, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important. And I was with my kids. I was going to get a passport about three weeks ago with my youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And there was a family of about six in front of us, right? And then she didn't know, she didn't know what to fill on the form. So I went in and I asked her in Spanish what does she want. I helped them register and, and I thought she could Spanish. Her I really want to hear you speak Spanish. Can you do that part you... in Spanish? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenas tardes. Todo mm -hmm. el mundo. Me alegro mucho que, que estás aquí para escuchar, uh, para compartir este tiempo con, conmigo y con, con Zoe. Mientras wow. yo hablo de. Mi libro, Apples in a Seed. Oh, my God. Entonces, quiero decir muchas gracias por estar con nosotros hoy. Wow. Wow. And bonjour, tout le monde. <laughs> Je suis très content que vous êtes ici avec nous. Wow. Merci beaucoup. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know Big Sis Elsie, who is also a producer on this show, is probably jumping in her seat right now, going, hey, see, see, see. <laughs> I just knew that the next comment was going to be from her. This is incredible. This is incredible. And not to talk about all the other languages that you speak out of Ghana and out of Africa. This Gracias. is the power. Gracias. Yes. <laughs> but Zoe, so do you know what that means, though? Right. Mm -hmm. That means that we have to use all our gifts. Mm. There's so many people listening who have many gifts, right? So it's not, I, I'll tell people, I studied French and Spanish, but I wasn't good in math and the other things. You are good in math, you are good in other things. Mm. We have to use all the gifts. Wow. That is why God put those in us, you oh, know. So yes. it's not about the language. So whatever you have, use it. Wow. We're always looking for something outside of ourselves. And when Jesus wanted to feed the 5,000, he asked the disciples, what do you have? What do you, right? What and I'm so, Jesus could have ordered Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> like, right, for everybody. To show us that right. we have what is within us wow. to be who he wants us to be. So okay. everything that we need is within us. Wow. If we could, we could only look within. within. So those apples in the seeds mm. are all the apples in your seed. So we don't want to die then people will read, read, will read our obituary. Oh, Rosemary used to be good in French. It's like, for what purpose did it serve? Right? Mm. So let's use it. And even if they write it in the obituary, let them write it in the obituary for us having used those gifts. Wow. And not just say that we had them. Wow. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Juliet says, everything that we need is within us. Every single thing we need is within us. And indeed, you're really speaking to me at this moment. You have no idea. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so we're going to jump through some things. There's another part about um, George Washington Carver that I think I want to just reserve for you guys. You know, once you get the book, you're going to learn so much about how he used, um, he's used just peanuts, or for us Africans, we call them ground nuts, right? He found purpose for those, for, for that, like 300 different purposes for that. That's incredible. Paint, dye, nail polish, um, uh, 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 peanut butter. <laughs> All kinds of incredible things. And, you know, uh, um, even though I knew a little bit about this, I didn't know the story behind the story and how he even got his name Carver. And the fact that he used to, he was actually, they used to call him Carver's Washington. That really hit me in the gut. That hurt me. I was like, oh my God, this is, it, it's almost like saying you don't belong to yourself. You have nothing in and of yourself you belong to cover um and so we're not going to go into it i just kind of prepped it for you i want you to go get the book and kind of read that part for yourself it it it, it packs it <laughs> anyway now so zoe uh for right. george washington cover there's a word it right so <laughs> he was so sickly that thieves came to steal his family to sell to another you yes. know but he was so sickly they didn't want him so they just left him behind and I always ask, what if? What if he wasn't sick? If he, was, if, if he wasn't sickly, he wouldn't have lived with the white people. And the woman was the one who taught him how to cook, yes. how to have a love for plants. So all those things that God had purposed in his life that would happen was going to go through the fact that he was born a slave. Right. And, yes. And the fact that he was sickly. And so the people who were like marauding them were like, you're too sick. We don't. He wasn't want of use to them. He wasn't of use to them. Little did they know there was something. But he was out. of use to God, right? Yes. So if you and I and all of us listening would have judged George Washington Carver, mm, this person would be useless. They won't amount to anything. Wow. In what we think and in God's purposes lies the magic, right? Mm -hmm. So that is that. So I'm sure you're looking at people around you, and you are playing God, saying. Mm, this is successful, right? That's 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 how we do. Yes. But if you see years from now, I went to Wesley Girls, so I see some of my Wesley Girls people are on on the you know oh, are, are on yes. here, mm -hmm. and 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 I think it's an advice to ourselves: mm -hmm. don't discount anybody. Mm -hmm. So all the people at Wesley Girls that I thought they were this, that, 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 I had an opportunity to learn every time and every time again that God doesn't play that way. So the people that I knew were going to be successful, at the end of the day, it wasn't what that happened. So maybe that is one thing. Don't discount yourself and wow. don't discount anybody. Mm, mm. And that is so incredible. Now I'm going back and saying, you know what? I was discounted too. I'm one of those that was just like, you, this person from the North who should not be here. And look, you know, nothing I did seemed... It, important enough or good enough you know you are <laughs> anyway because we're here to talk about apples in the seed we're not even going to go in there but yes um as professor audrey says don't discount anybody this is what this book is doing oh my god now let us go into this woman i am excited to talk about with you because when i started to read about her i remember that when i go to the Spanish shops, Indian shops, um, Japanese, Chinese shops, like grocery shops, I see her products there, right here. And I live in Jewish country, by the way. So there's like kosher places, and you can go into uh, what they call a like glad kosher uh, uh, um, um, uh, grocery shop, and Inkulenu is there. Believe it or not, Inkulenu is I, I wept a little bit because, and, and then I was ashamed, even though when I was reading this book, there was no one here. I could not look at myself in the mirror because I did not know about her. This woman is Madame Esther Ifua Oklu, uh, born April 18, 1919. Um, wow, she lived a good life too. Long one, thank God for her life. All the way to February 2, 2002. And you describe her as an industrialist, a, preser a, pre a preservationist, 
a mother, a daughter, a sister, a national legend. And honestly, as a Ghanaian, I am personally ashamed. As an African, I am doubly ashamed because movies should have been made about her. Documentaries should be made about her. Um, it's now going to be my personal challenge. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I, I, I just, anyway. But I just, I read about her and then I sat here and I asked myself, what is my excuse? I have a computer. I have internet. I, 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 I come on every Tuesday. We do this incredible thing. How can I have an excuse for not doing everything, all the not germinating and manufacturing all the apples that are inside of me. How? I don't have an excuse. And the thing that hit me um, was this. I, I, I definitely did massacre your book, by the way, too many. <laughs> you wrote here, she embarked on her journey to become a revolutionary businesswoman during the decade of the Great Depression. Now, if you know what the Great Depression was about, and this woman born in the 1900s who defied all odds, you will know why I am talking so animatedly about her. Um, when she was a t just a teenager, her judgment while handling different scenarios along the way can provide proper guidance to new entrepreneurs. I dare you. In fact, I triple dare you as a Ghanaian African entrepreneur. If you want to learn about how to navigate the world, forget the internet and all of the markers and, and KPIs, forget all of that. I dare you to study Esther Oakley. And so first I want to ask you, well, first I want to say thank you for writing about her. But second, why did you choose her? Why Esther? Obviously, we know that, but I want you to answer it. So, one, she was a legend. And I think that, you know, so Achebe was the one who said, and so the lions have their own historians, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Yes. When I was growing up in Ghana, history, I learned about European people, American people. I didn't learn about Ghana people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a so clue. Madam Esoklu even existed, yes. but I knew about Inkulinu, by the way. Mm -hmm. But then as I was doing my research, you know, this was a long research. When I learned that with just 10 shillings that her aunt gave her, 10 shillings? She, she purchased oh, sugar, God. oranges, firewood, a, 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 a dozen glass jars for making marmalade jam, mm -hmm. and she started selling them. She sold them a shilling per jar, and that was how she began. Right. And then if you look at everything else that she did. Mm. So from those very humble beginnings, I chose her because I remember my dad gave me a small, I like, you know, gave me a small plot of land in front of our house. I sold, I sold um, plants and flower pots. Up to now, when I go to some of my parents' homes, and I'm a very, I'm a very fierce vendor. Mm -hmm. If I'm buying something, if I'm selling something, you must buy it, else I'll fight you, right? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, so wow. I knew that my friend's parents loved me. So I sold flower pots. Even today, when I go to some of my, they are ceramic pots, so some of them are filled, but the pots are still there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so it's, it goes to show you that Madame Esther Oklu used what was in her hands. Mm -hmm. Everything that she knew, everything that was inside her is what... She unleashed, we saw her potential in many ways. So when she saw how successful she was, she started training other women and she started creating opportunities for other women to also show their success. Because our society is not that kind of society. Mm -hmm. Our society revels in people who are wealthy and people so, our society doesn't even have time to realize potential, right? And, 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 and it's very sad because we have so many people who are very talented, but because society is unconsciously divided into the haves and the have-nots, the have-nots are also voiceless. Mm. So they usually don't have a say, they don't have somebody who believes in them. Mm. Oh, I want to, I want to, have you ever had cassava fries? Mm. Yes. Ghana should Fancy never Fancy have imported... Fancy. Yes. Potatoes. 
cassava fries are even better. They don't wow. soak in oil. But because we don't even value the farmer who is harvesting that cassava, that we can help them so that if, if they don't even sell all their words during the season, mm. they can, oh, Lord, I, you know, uh, it hurts me all the time, all the time. that yeah. we don't value pe people. We value only certain kind of people. So like a blowhorn, they, are, they have the megaphones mm. and we don't. Right, so the women who 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 grill fish at times, they fry fish at times. We have so much. If I was in Ghana, I would have loved to start like a small business, but not like they have in Ghana in those offices. A real small business and bring innovative ideas. Have people bring their innovative ideas and support them. Harness that. Harness that. What Madam Esso included. Wow. So that that guidance to new entrepreneurs see that. Wow. So wow. somebody comes and say, hey, um, Elsie or Ijua or Juliet, Audrey, I have an idea. I want to start making cassava fries and selling them, but I don't have money to buy like whatever. Wow. Do you think somebody like this will even have a voice? No. Thanks to Madam Esso Clues aunt, she gave her 10 shillings. And today, in 2018, Google, that was when I said, wow, she's from Ghana. And I didn't even know about her. 2018, Google um, honored her. Google doodle. Yes. Wow. For, for us, I said, wow. You know, so we need to value our own people, the people in our society, our own Ghanaian people who have all those gifts, who speak all those languages. How do we harness that Ghanaian potential? Mm -hmm. No, those who go to Westigas and Legon and Tech, they already have a way, like us. But how do we, you and I, and everybody collectively harness it for those others who are coming? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so you go around and everybody is selling coconuts in a wheel wheelbarrow, right? Whose idea is this to start buying the coconut from them so they can go? Madam Esolu would have done this and bottled in Kulenu coconut milk or coconut juice for us. But look at these people. Every day, maybe they sell like 20, 30. So in our country, a lot of us are going to go to our graves with everything the Lord gave to us because we didn't live in a country that inspired that kind of innovation. So if it was left to the government alone, there wouldn't have been a Madam Esther Oklu. Yes. This is if it was left to the gov. I love that you said that. Right. And Joa says ten shillings to start a marmalade business. By the time she sold her first products, she had a hundred shillings. Yes. Can you? If, I'm like getting out of my chair. I want to do like do a lap or something because yes. like uh, one of our producers always say. Uh, um, Uncle Yidana, who is another producer, he says, little by little, the market gets full. You've got to start somewhere. Little by little, something happens. 10 shillings becomes 100. And then 100 shillings become uh, 1,000 shillings. And 1,000 shillings becomes 10,000. And then you keep going, right? And so this is why I'm so excited. Here's one of the things... Um, <laughs> Oh my God, you fired me up, Rosie. Rose, Rosa, Rosie, I don't even know what to call you anymore. <laughs> but here's one of the things uh, you wrote here. Spearheading the development of the indigenous economy of Ghana based on agriculture. She said, now mind you, we didn't have Apple iPhones or the latest mm -hmm. Samsung S, whatever it is that we, 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 we normally have now. She said, our problem here in Ghana, and I dare say in Africa for that matter, well, recently sans Rwanda, because <laughs> I'm defecting to Rwanda, I've been telling my friends. <laughs> Uh, she said, um, our problem here in Ghana is that we have turned our backs on agriculture over the past 40 years, since the beginning of compulsory education, we have been mimicking the West. And now I, 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 I realize the irony, especially because I live in the West. So it's going to be very hard for me to not mimic the West in one way or another, or to not leverage the things that the West provides for us to be able to come up in the world or whatever we, 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 we say we're doing in the West at the moment. But the fact that she said something like this and nobody even 
thought to, to pay attention to that statement really bothers me. Another one of the things that I, um, I, I underlined here, this, <laughs> oh my God, thank God because Kwame Nkrumah saw, Kwame Nkrumah saw and helped her. Um, we're not politicians on this platform. We're not um, people who want to have any governmental, anything for that matter, but if, Perchance anyone here is listening and has any influence at all mm -hmm. in government, please start hearing us, start listening, start putting the monies where it's really important. Exactly. Please, exactly. please, please. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Anyway. Um, <laughs> here's another thing you wrote about her. Through her efforts, entrepreneurial women gained back their respect and benefited from the stream of resources offered by the women's world banking she created women and then she went on and started having expos in mexico i'm gonna stop here because I, I i i don't know what to say but i just thought we had to talk about this she talks again here she said women must know that the strongest power in the world is economic power exactly oh my god I, I, I just threw the gauntlet and I kind of just was like, I need to let this sit with me for a couple more um, days. And I indeed let it sit with me for a couple, couple more days. Um, now, here's a, a question for you. And I know we didn't discuss this, but I really want to throw it out there. And also to everyone that is on here, because there's smart people on this platform. We have doctors and uh, incredible entrepreneurs and lawyers and how can we leverage Madam Oakley's legacy in this era of technology? How can we do that? So, Zoe, I think this is a big question, and I think that it's not one that we can answer today. Yes. But you have a platform. Maybe you can bring a group of women together for us to actually, you know, so... Oh, producer Elsa, at... are you writing this down, please? Yes, go ahead. I've been looking at the Ghanaian... Um, woman mm -hmm. in the immense suffering and if you've been to Ghana lately mm -hmm. so the women who sell water oranges, bread they are up early maybe mm -hmm. from 7 to about you know so we are talking a lot about teenage pregnancy in Ghana mm -hmm. the mothers are busy doing selling things mm -hmm. for barely nothing and doing that every day and in, in, every day in and out. Mm -hmm. How do we alleviate that? Madame Estoclu said that the greatest power in this world is economic power. And that is so important. A lot of these women are single women looking after their kids themselves. Mm -hmm. If you look at countries like Bangladesh, I think it was Mohammed Yunus who talked about micro financing mm -hmm. and how that is important. He said, and I quote, if you plant an oak tree in a, in a flower pot, it would have all the semblance of an oak tree, but it would be like that. It would be stunted. If you transport that oak tree into a large field, the potential is limitless, mm. right? It looks like for the Ghanaian woman, the majority of the women who are either in agriculture or who are into petty tr trading, it looks like we put them all in flower pots. We see a little bit of glimpses, you know. So I buy peanuts from this woman in Kumase maybe for the past 35 years since I was a student in Lagos. She still sits at the same place and I go to see her every time and I take pictures with her. And she feeds me like she wants to fatten me because she thinks that I didn't grow fat. But that is for another conversation, you know. But I always, so I, I always go and say, but Ima, so how are things? And I'm always listening. So Ima, you've been sitting here almost 40 years at the same place, frying peanuts, taking off the, deshelling them and putting them in plastic. We need to be in a society where we can see Ima progress. Like Mother, like Mr. Yeah. Oklu. He didn't just stop there, 
right? Mm -hmm. He also went in, she also went into cunning, metal cunning, right? So we need to figure out a way to help these women. Maybe this is where they have started, but what if, what if, uh, Zoe, that's what, how you began. Yeah. What if, what if a group of women here came together and put our shillings together and started a microfinance way for about maybe 10 or 20 women? What if a group of women came here and we brought a group of young people who have our universities and asked them to be creative and think of innovative ways to harness, right? So yeah. there's limitless potential in our society that doesn't need the IMF or the World Bank and all of that. Wow. We just need to listen. My youngest daughter was about six. We were traveling from Kumasi, Accra to Kumasi, and we stopped at in Koko. She was six. She asked me, Mom, why aren't these kids in school? I told my husband, I said, I don't think our politicians see their kids and they think and they ask themselves those questions. But Hadassah, she's She's thinking we always have to force her to go to school. So why are these kids selling things? And I said, it's because our leaders and us, we don't see. We become so used to little girls not living their potential. And if society, we become okay with it. So now we see more and more little girls who should be in school, who yeah. are the future of our economy, of our society, and who the Lord has put limitless potential. Remember, he's not going to put the potential only in our children. Mm. It's already in those children too, mm. you know. So it's just that I hate to be philosophical, but this is where my mind goes every day. Like, you mm. know, I'm always thinking, wow. what can I do? But there's power in community yes. and there's power in this platform. Mm. Sister Abba has a platform. Yes. Maggie has Art. a platform. These are yes. friends that I know. Yes. What can we do to use this platform to start to alleviate poverty mm. and help a lot of these women experience economic power? Wow. Wow. What can we do? And like a lot of us women said, in like, go Ghana, young people live with us. We mm. need to send them to school. Slavery is done. Mm. We abort slavery when slavery existed. Wow. If we send our kids to school, send those young children to school also. We don't know what God has in store for them. Yes. Don't let be the ones that stem God's purposes in their lives. Wow. You know, so I don't mean to go philosophical, but I No, and this was really not philosophical. This is what you, you are saying it as it's it should be said. And we need to get more practical and really stop thinking about the government. Um I think the West has uh, become what it is now because a lot of people did not really wait for the government to give them anything. They decided to go out and do. And so yep. maybe it's time, even, even though we say we don't have enough, it's time to even the not enough that we, that the ones that the little that we don't have, it's time to, to try to get apples out of these seeds. It's exactly really right. So, so we are the answers we are waiting for. Yes. It's not somebody else. It's not right? someone so, else. It's this not is, somebody else. It's us. Yeah. This, this has been an incredible conversation, and we can keep going and going and going. Every single week, we keep saying we're going to keep to an hour, but we never <laughs> quite achieve that aim because there's always so much meat in everything that we do here. And, and Rosemond, you have added to it so incredibly. Like Margie always says, and this is something I always credit to Margie, um, she says that there is so much room for everyone at the top why do we want to keep people at the bottom there's so much room and if anything if you don't get anything at all from this book the one thing i want you to take away with you is this no matter how you were born born free born a slave uh like trevor noah uh would say born a crime uh, uh born rich born poor it does not matter where you started. However, where you're going to end up is very, very important. Rosemond, I look forward to when you will write about 
even more Africans. I look forward to when you will write about more women in Africa in entrepreneurship. I look forward to when you will write about young women in entrepreneurship and how far they've come. I look forward to so many projects that you, I, I really want you to get into and get us fired up because you fired me up. And um, in, a, in, a, in a recent meeting, a, a little, no, actually maybe close to a week now in a recent meeting, I, I made a comment about how I thought I was angry at God. And, and, and for, for the most part, I do that with God because I, I find myself being the petulant child of God who can say, dad, I'm angry with you. Like, like being angry with God really matters. Like it, it can do something. But um, when I started to read this, I started to ask myself, what if out of all of those 5,000 somewhat spermatosa that was going to come out of my earthly father, what if God skipped me? Or what if he chose the person right before me? There yep. is yes. Nothing. Zoe, that is so true. And I, I think on this note, you know, so when I was at, when I was at in primary school, I used to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. It was okay. When I was at Wesley Girls, a lot of people thought I was a fool because, but they didn't know, but I knew that was how God made me, right? So I didn't relent. I was myself throughout. When I did my first comedy, comedy gig, so when I said I'm a chief encouragement officer, God put a spirit of laughter and joy in me so I can bring a spirit of laughter and joy. But you know, in Ghana, so they said I wasn't serious. As if not being serious, it's a, it's a genetic defect. No, we can't all be serious, right? Mm -hmm. But then when I did my first comedy gig, so I know how to make old white men laugh. And I get <laughs> age, right? So, so when I did my first comedy old gig, white God men doesn't waste terrible. anything. Uh -huh. God doesn't waste anything. People thought I was a fool. So now I'm using everything that God made in me. And I know that I can spread joy. So I think for me, what I want to leave with all of you is, and please write it down. Mm -hmm. that you are a unique person mm -hmm. and that you are created in God's image and that you have potential, tremendous potential residing in you. Yes. And remember your five loaves and your two fishes. Offer them to the Lord and you make an abundant feast for thousands and thousands and thousands to enjoy. Wow. So oh Zoe, thank you so much for having me. I'm sitting here inspired myself, thinking about the what next. Mm. And so thank you. Oh my God. This has been an incredible, incredible one. Um, 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 big brother Nana, I see, I see you. Thank you for doing this. He says apples in a seed can be ordered via, and he put the book nuke, um, you know, link on here. Guys, please jump on. Even if you're not, even if you don't live in 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 um in Ghana, if you don't live in Ghana or Africa for that matter, and you think you can order yours on another platform, that platform that shall not be mentioned, um, please reach out to uh, Big Brother Nana Aredamwa and say, I want to order apples in a seed for someone. Can we do that? This is a place to start. Order apples in a seed for someone. How about that? For a child, I know Big Brother can do it. He will just jump on and get it to a young girl, a, a person that loves to read, even a person that doesn't love to read. Even if they don't open this book this year, I guarantee you in five years, they might pick it up. So please do that for us. We beg of you. There's so many other authors, um, you know, uh, the Young Shimigrant series by Margie Marge, uh, Reflections of a Hope Monger by Abba uh, Keto Anda, uh, I'm thinking about EJOD, who I, Jane of Deku, uh, her book of poems that, and, and so she wrote, but I call her EJOD. Find these incredible authors on a uh, 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 book nuke and order some of these books. Maybe get a bundle and give it to someone, a girl child, a boy child. I don't care gender even, just gift it to someone. It will cost you less, I guarantee you, less than $50 to do that. And today you could buy lunch for $50 for most people, right? So 
um, that's what I, I thought I should put there. So Big Brother, thank you. I appreciate that you put the link there. Guys, let's jump on it and let's inspire each other. Um, we're 13 minutes um, out of the top of the hour. We're going to try to unwind right now. One of the other things I wanted to talk to you about is the fact that we're trying so hard to move to YouTube. So please, please, please find us on YouTube and um, producer, do me a favor and put the link to the YouTube on here too so that people can see it and jump on it and go you know do whatever you need to do subscribe all of that good stuff so we can keep this process going uh what else do we have to talk about next week is kind of up in the air i love that we get to be authentic here the fact that people are people and they're busy and they're trying to be entrepreneurs we were going to have the Jinjun brothers here and for those of you who jumped on honey a, a, a while back um uh, maybe two or three months ago you would have learned about the Jinjan brothers uh, coming out of Ethiopia, uh, but they're here now and they're doing incredible things. No, I don't think it's Ethiopia. It's another country, which I will tell you later. <laughs> but um, busyness and all kinds of things going on. And so it's very tentative, but I like for us to be open here. It's okay if we ask people to come on, but life gets in the way. We'll figure out a way. We're storytellers. We always do. So like Roseman, we're taking the no's and the yeses and we are rolling with the punches and one foot in front of the other every single week. That's how we do it here on To My Younger Self. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is we are open for sponsorship. If you want to partner with us, let your entrepreneurial seeds be seen by people all over the African continent. This is a good place to start. Partner with us. Let us see your work. Let us hear about you. And one, what they say, hand go, hand come, right? Let's do it together. So we do want to hear from you. Uh, find us. I think that the email address is somewhere here. Let's see. Yes, the email address is somewhere here. And you can just reach out to us. What else do we have to touch base on? We don't know. So we'll let you know. <laughs> Rosemond, it has been an incredible, incredible time with you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for speaking to us today. Apples in the seat. Oh, by the way, she did write about Kwame and Chroma. And I'll tell you what was happening to me. The whole time I was reading, right, I kept saying, where's Kwame and Chroma? Where's Kwame and Chroma? Where's Kwame and Chroma? And then at the very last chapter, she hits me with Kwame and Kwame. And I go, yes, there he is. There he is. Please, 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 guys, let us uh, find the book. It's an incredible book. I, I totally enjoyed reading it. And um, yeah, this has been a great show. My name is Zoe Baraka. And I know, Rosemont, you kind of already signed off. You gave them Be Unique and all of that good stuff. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us before we sign off properly? Well, I just want to say thank you. I know from different parts of the world, some of you, it's past your bedtime. Oh. But, or some of you, so early, but you made time to come. I think that this show wouldn't be a show if it wasn't for you, right? So... On behalf of Zoe and the team, I want to say thank you. Amen. I want to also thank you for indulging me. I So there's a lot of who come. Some people are very academic and all of that. I am just me. And when I was younger, my friends would always say, Rosie, thank you for saying the thing that we all want to say, but we cannot say. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. And I want you, as you go again, to remember that you are unique, you are created in God's image. There is tremendous potential living in you and you have intrinsic value, no matter who or what, or no matter what you're going through. And of course, remember your five loaves and two fishes. Wow. Remember that if you don't deliver that to the Lord, he can multiply it. Mm -hmm. So remember, it's not within somebody. It is all it's within all us. In May God give us grace yes. to realize who we truly are in him. And may he give us grace to unleash our potential. Wow. 
Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. And Kwame Achu, wow, thank you. I did say a greeting for you, and I was trying to remember. Should I say good day, mate? I don't know. I think I got that right. But thank you so much for staying past your bedtime uh, over in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for being a, a, an incredible supporter uh, of this show. And um, we hope to see you many, many, many weeks past. Thank you so much. Guys, it has been incredible. From Rosie and I, um, out of the To My Younger Self Studios, we want to say goodbye. I am so sorry. I wanted to do this. One last shout out to our incredible executive producer, Emmanuel Sorogo. Yesterday was his birthday. God bless this man. Guys, please, please, please let him know how much we appreciate him. He's the reason why the lights are on. <laughs> He's the reason why we have equipment. He's a, he is an incredible executive producer. Happy birthday. We appreciate you. Please say happy birthday to Mr. Emmanuel uh, Sorogo on, 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 in the comment section. Uh, rain some blessings on him. May God continue to increase his hand so that we can increase, so that others can increase. Always a ripple effect. Emmanuel, we love you. We're grateful for you. Thank you for sharing your life, your wealth, your investment, your time, your energy, your in intellect with us because really he does it all. So we really appreciate you and we truly, truly appreciate you and bless you. All righty. This is it, guys. We are signing off now. Rosie, thank you, everyone. Thank you. My name is thank Rosie you. Maraca. We absolutely love you and we are signing off. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you.